Oh. Hello, my DIY friends. Jeff here again, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video that we're going to show you how to install these sliding mirror glass closet doors here. And this is a great feature to have in your house here. You should definitely get rid of those old, ugly bifold doors and replace them with this. This provides you with two benefits here, two main benefits. One, it makes your house look bigger and brighter when you walk in because it just reflects off of everything all the way across the house. And, uh, and the second benefit that you have is these are a lot easier to deal with than those old bifold doors that keep coming off the track and they get stuck and they jump around on you and everything. This looks a lot better and it looks neater. And ladies, the other benefit for you is that when you're walking out of the house, you get to check yourself out full length in the mirror before you walk out the door. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So here we have to remove this old bottom track. So we pried this guy up so that now we can put in this new bottom track. This here is for the mirrored doors. So we'll clean this all up here and vacuum everything out. And this is going to have to just straddle across the wood and the tile. And that's a concrete floor there. So we're going to tap con. Wherever you see the screw holes here, we're going to have to tap con white tap con screws in there all right so now we're going to pre-drill our holes here for the tap cons if you recall uh, we have a cement floor right under this bottom plate here so what we have to do here is we have to use a masonry bit this is a special bit it's a special drill bit that's made for drilling into concrete you cannot use a regular drill bit you'll sit there with it spinning all day long and it will go zero it will go nowhere and uh, we do have a hammer mode right here on the on the drill, but the thing is, hammer mode is really loud. It goes like, and it's getting a little late in the day, so we don't want to um, upset the neighbors downstairs. So we're going to use it in regular mode. It just takes a little bit longer, no big deal. We're using here the white tap con screws. So these are are anchors that are meant to go into concrete, and we got white here to match as close as we could to the plate here bottom track that the, the two sliding mirror doors are going to rest on here. So when we install these sliding metal doors here, um, these are mirror doors that are that uh, have wheels on the bottom so one door will go here on the inside and another door will go here on the outside and this is where the wheels will rest for each of these individual mirrored doors here. So let's go ahead and get these drilled and let's get them anchored down. And you don't just throw it up there any old place and start screwing it in. This particular manufacturer wants you to set it back about a sixteenth of an inch from the front edge. So you don't want to be flush with the front edge. You want it to be you know, set back just a sixteenth of an inch. So, and by doing that, and then by doing what we did earlier, setting the bottom track seven eighths of an inch back from the door frame there, that ensures that these sliding mirror closet doors will be okay so by adhering to those two distances seven eighths on the bottom and a sixteenth of an inch back on the top we'll be guaranteeing that these sliding mirror doors will be plumb meaning they're perfectly vertical that means that where the top goes into the track will be directly over where the bottom wheel fits in and rolls in on the slot down here so that's important to remember that, to maintain those two distances, those dimensions, 
that the manufacturer tells you to use. Okay, so now before we insert the doors into the track, remember this is the upper part. This will go up into that E-track first. And then we make sure the door is vertical and bring these rollers here over and set them over the track. Now in order to protect the track from getting scuffed and scratched, remember that these are shipped by the factory, you can see, with the wheels up. The wheels are retracted, just like an airplane. When an airplane takes off and the wheels disappear into the fuselage, well that's what we have right here. So what we have to do before we do anything with these doors is we take a Phillips head screwdriver and we turn that screw right there and both of these wheels we want we want them to come out a half an inch below the bottom of the door so let's go ahead and do that now for both of those wheels okay so watch closely on the wheel what happens as I turn the screw see how it's slowly forcing the wheel down which is sort of lifting the door up so now the bottom of the door can't scratch uh, the track there you can see it slowly pushes the wheel down and out. So we want to make sure the wheel's out about a half of an inch. We have to do it the exact same on both sides. Okay, so now we do the other side. You can see it's starting to lift up. Okay, so we're inserting the rear door first and you squeeze the two little black wheels together and you let it go up into the channel there. You do that on both sides. So meanwhile the bottom of the door is still like this. So then you lift it up and rest it on the rear track. Okay, so here it is rolling nice on the track there. And so really all you have to do now is just adjust each of your individual rollers there of the height to make sure that this door is not crooked. All right. So there's the first door installed. Now one thing we'll notice right away here is, see that gap there on the right side of the, the door there? And as you look, as it goes down and down and down closer to the bottom, that gap gets a lot skinnier. So it's obvious that either the door's in a little crooked or the wall is just crooked. So we'll have to get a spirit level and put it on the edge of the door here and make sure that the door is level. And you can level it by adjusting the screws on those wheels at the bottom, remember? And then the other thing too is if you look here, see the door is hitting the, the edge of that um, baseboard there. So we'll have to cut that little piece off and get them shaved down to allow the door to go all the way to the wall there. So these are the things that you'll probably end up looking at when you're installing your doors. Okay, so the second door is gonna be the same thing. You squeeze the, the wheels in and stick it up into the E-channel. You do that on both sides, make sure they're both in there. Okay, so they're both in there good. Now we can lift up the door. Well, we've brought out the six foot level and we're going to put it up here against the door frame. I just want to see, well, how level is the, the rough end opening that the builder left is here. And when you look at it, you can see it's sort of touching the right side line on that bubble there. So if we were to pull the thing out enough to just make it level there, and then you look at the space, you know, it's almost a half inch is what it needs up near the top here. So you can see how far um, out of um, level here that a lot of times the builders will leave these door openings for you. Okay. So now let's go ahead and check the actual door itself. All right, so here we are on the left edge of the door here and it lines up with that opening. And you can see right there, it's sort of, it might look like it's center, but again, it's sort of touching the line on the right side. So in order to center it, I'm pulling it over to the left a little. So here, watch, I'll show you. Pull it out just a little to the left. But when you look down at the bottom of the door, it's by the time you get to the bottom there, you're almost three quarters of an inch out. So that's how far off this door really is. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the screw down at the bottom wheel there to move this door in the proper direction. This side has to come up.
show you something here and why this is a very interesting uh, failure mode we have here. So I see how the door is there. It's, it's, it's looking reasonably even with the wall. It's a little bit off, not too bad off, but it's reasonably close here. Okay. The problem is what we had to do to this door to make it kind of line up equal here with the So if you look here again at our spirit level, you'll see, hey, look, it's, it's off. We had to make it be off. We had to go back down and adjust the wheels to make it off in order to make this door line up to the roughing opening of the wall there that the builder left us because A, of course, the wall is off, but guess what else is off too? Down here at the bottom, the floor is off. Now let me show you something. Now you're gonna run into stuff like this because the tilers that builders use are the worst people on earth at their trade. So look on the right-hand side of the door. We're here on the right-hand side of the door frame, okay? And look where that bubble is. It's, it's crossing the line on the right side. <clears throat> so that's off. The floor is definitely not level right here. But if we move the skirt level, level not even 24 inches over to the left, you can see now he's off on the left side a little bit. He's like touching the left side of the bubble. So the floor is one direction this way over here, and that's another direction over here. So that means our track, you know, we already knew our track wasn't level because we looked at it when we first installed it. But anyway, um, so that's a problem because it doesn't make sense now to level the door because now you have the walls are out of whack, the floor's out of whack, and this wall is out of whack now. So you have three different planes that you're working against here and they're all against you because none of them are plumb square level and this is the problem with builders when they don't give you uh, stuff that's straight and level and plumb and all that so the best thing you can do in this case and you're going to run into this i can tell you that right now there's no way that your walls and doors and everything and your floors are going to be straight so what i recommend is that with this door on the left you bring it over near the wall and you just line it up so that it looks reasonably close to the wall because that's how people are going to see it when they walk in the door they're going to see this door here looking just like this and then the other door on the other side here we still have to adjust it just a little bit more but we've made this door pretty close to level with the, the frame there as well see so this is what you have to deal with. It's, you're playing this game of adjusting those wheels at the bottom to set the doors at a happy medium here. And, and no, no three sides are going to be completely happy here. But my, my uh, concern here is we just want to make sure that the door still glides. Because if you make these doors out of level to satisfy the wall, you're going to put too much stress on one of the wheels and it, and it won't it won't roll smoothly but in this case it looks like we're doing okay so we're not too far out of whack there so that's what you have to do with doors like these all right so after we're done with all of our adjustments of the rollers and everything let's take a look at our doors and they look pretty good if you look compared to uh, the crack here see the door on the left is looking pretty even all the way down and then as you come over and look at the, the right-hand side here, the right-hand door is pretty even all around there, see? So, it's all an optical illusion. Both of these doors are slightly off balance. They are not level because of the floor and everything. And there's no way you could do it. If you adjusted it now for level, it'll go out of level once you swing it over to the right. So let's look at this. With the door perfectly lined up on the left-hand side, let's see what it does if we bring it over to the right. Look how far off it is. It's like about an inch up at the top. Let me get the back door out of the way so you can see it. So it's about an inch up at the top, and as it slowly goes all the way down to the bottom, it comes down to about a quarter of an inch at the bottom. So you're talking three quarters of an inch off on the right-hand side, but yet when you move it back to the left, it's perfectly lined up. So that's why the best way to do this set of doors is you leave this left door over here up against that crack. And then the rear door, we've got him aligned perfectly for the right hand side. See that? Looks really good all the way down. So when people walk in the door and look here, everything looks like it's nicely aligned. So you're just tricking the eye. 
and more importantly, the operation of these doors is nice and smooth too. See. So if we were to move this door here, which is now aligned to this side, over to the left, you'll find that he's gonna be off over there, see? So that's all a function of the, the floor and the walls being horrifically out of the square. But we adjusted that and made it look like everything was in square here. And then also, too, if you remember up here in this corner, remember how a few days ago this was all open, there was a pipe showing and everything? So we really made this look nice here with this wall, filled it in nicely with the drywall and you would never know that there was ever any work done up there. And we made that nice corner bead. We'll put a link to the video down below where we did all that. In case you ever have to find yourself in a position where you need to patch up uh, huge holes in a drywall, especially in a difficult spot, this had to go all the way around the corner. It was completely open all the way around there because we had to do some major surgery to a pipe in there, a drain pipe for the air conditioner to go down. Okay, so we are opting not to place these door handles. These are really bad. These are just thin, cheap looking plastic uh, nothing. So I would want something more like a square knob or something fancy. So I think in this case, we could, we'll either do without or see if they have anything in the stores uh, along with the cabinet poles. You know, we'll look over there and see if they've got anything or anything for mirror doors. But these are too cheap to ruin the look of your door when it's not too much effort for anybody to open the slider like that. Look, we can see here we have a really good, nice looking job here. Let me close this side here. And you can see they're, they just look pretty nice to the eye when you walk in. And these are reasonably popular because when you walk in the door and you see the reflection off this mirror, it goes straight to the back of the house. So it makes it look like it's bigger here. And also people like to check their reflection as they go out. Well, there's our closet doors there. And I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up down below. It lets us know that you like us. And don't forget while you're here to hit that subscribe button down below. It doesn't cost you anything. And you'll have access to all 250 of our videos that we've uploaded that cover all sorts of projects around your house. And if you want to subscribe, you hit that great button right next to it. And that will alert you every time we upload a new video so that you never miss a single video. Well, that's it for this week, and we'll see you next week. Bye.